What's up, bridal babes? I hope you're ready for another exciting episode of your favorite local wedding show, Bridal Buzz. I'm your host, Kat, and today's episode's gonna look a little bit different than what you're used to. It's just gonna be me in the studio, and we're gonna go over 15 wedding traditions and why they exist. So, let's get started. Now, bridal babes, before we get into this list, I just want to remind you that you can find blogs just like this, exactly this topic, actually, on sanantoniaweddings.com. So head on over there and see it for yourselves. Let's dive in. Number one on the list, white wedding dresses. Why do we wear the color white? Some people associate it with purity, with cleanliness, but in all reality, it all started with Queen Victoria. So Queen Victoria was thought to be the first woman to familiarize the white wedding dress. Typically women would wear whatever nice dress they owned already, but with Queen Victoria, they started to see that trend of the white wedding dress coming in. And at the time of Queen Victoria, it was a very bright, clean white. Nowadays, we're seeing more creams, more beiges, pink tones come into the wedding field, but that is where the white wedding dress trend started. So what do you guys think about white wedding dresses? Let me know in the comments below. Do you plan on wearing a colored dress? Do you plan on wearing a white wedding dress and why? Number two on the list, bridesmaids. Nowadays, we typically have bridesmaids in our wedding party to have that sense of support around us, to celebrate alongside our besties. But originally, bridesmaids were included in the wedding to fool evil spirits. They would dress very similar to the bride to make sure that the bride was not the one getting attacked. And also, if they were traveling long distances, these bridesmaids would dress up super nice and would do that to kind of trick people into not knowing who the real bride was. The reason they did this is because the bride was often handed lots of gifts, lots of money, lots of presents, and bridesmaids would be her shield her defense and make sure that nobody really knew exactly who that bride was to pinpoint them to take all of their goods from them so that is where bridesmaids came from number three the best man i'm kind of shocked at this one guys so nowadays we have the best man in the party he is the go-to person for the groom he's planning that bachelor party he's making sure the groom's having a good time on that wedding day but originally the best man was introduced into the wedding scene before the women's rights movement really began. This is when brides were still given away by their family in exchange for goods, right? If the wife did not want to go with the man, then the man would bring in what he called his best man to help forcefully remove the bride from her home and family because obviously that is not a one-man job. You need two men. So you got the groom and you got the best man and glad that's not why we have the best man anymore. So best man out there, just remember, it's not your job to kidnap your guy's uh, bride. It is your job to make sure they have a good, fun and safe time um, <laughs> throughout their wedding parties. So let me know what you guys think about that one too, because that is wacky to me. Tradition number four the bride standing to the left of the groom at the altar. Here's why. Originally, if the bride's family was not a big fan of the groom, she would stand on the left of the groom so that he would have his right hand, his dominant hand, readily available to protect her. <laughs> I don't know what from, if Papa was trying to get up there and save his daughter or what, but that is traditionally why the bride stands to the left of the groom. And this is interesting to me because we're still doing this to this day. Brides typically stand on one side of the altar and the groom stands on the other. Number five, throwing the bouquet. This is a tradition that I actually think is super fun. It's something I look forward to when I go to weddings. Maybe it's because I'm trying to get that ring on it, but I think it's a fun tradition. And the reason this tradition began is because back in the day, women would run up to the bride, try and rip off a piece of her dress, try and take some of her flowers to receive some of that bridal energy, some of that good luck to hopefully get themselves to the altar pretty soon. So when all of that was going down, the bride would literally just throw her bouquet, kind of like, you know, someone comes up to you in the street trying to take something from you, you throw it and you run. That's what the bride would do. So she would throw her bouquet as a distraction, let the women fend for themselves with the bouquet, and then she would get the heck out of there. Nowadays, we see the bouquet being thrown at the end of the reception and it's thrown behind her. Whoever catches it is supposed to be the next person that's gonna get married. 
I think it's fun. What do you guys think? Is this a pointless tradition? Do you like the idea of passing on the bouquet? Let me know in the comments. Tradition number six, the wedding ring. So on top of just the ring itself, there's a tradition of wearing it on the third, one, two, three, <laughs> finger on your left hand. The reason we wear it on that finger is because it's believed that one of your veins in that finger is connected directly to your heart. So, you know, mushy gushy, lovey dovey. You want your ring to be connected to your heart because love. And then on top of why we wear it on that certain finger, the ring itself is supposed to resemble some sort of never ending, everlasting love, continuous loop, forever and ever. So that's why we wear a re wedding ring, not a wedding earring. All right, number seven, the veil. Nowadays, we see these in all sorts of different fashions. They can be embroidered with flowers, they can be adorned with pearls and diamonds and whatever you want on them. But traditionally, the veil existed to hide the bride from evil spirits. You never know what kind of evil spirits might be lurking around your wedding bridal babes. This tradition originated in Rome. The veil is a symbol of modesty, youth, and purity. I don't know if they necessarily resemble that nowadays, but I do love a good veil and what it can add to a wedding day look. So that is where that came from. If you were ever wondering, why do I wear this thing on my head? That is why. And before we move on to tradition number eight, I just wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, Texas Wedding Ministers. If you're looking for an officiant for your wedding, if you're looking for someone to help you plan some sort of elopement, Texas Wedding Ministers is here to help. They've got officiants for all kinds of couples. So whether you're a Star Wars nerd or a football fan, they've got someone that is gonna help you feel right at home at the altar and make your wedding day just as special as it can be. So check out Texas Wedding Ministers on sanantonioweddings.com and request more info. Tradition number eight, not seeing each other before the ceremony. I think this is one of those traditions that a lot of couples still like to respect. Sometimes we see that first look happening before she walks down the aisle or he, but traditionally and more often than not, we are seeing that first look at the altar and couples are not in contact for the you know, 12, 24 hours before the wedding happens. So this is why that happens. Back in the day when most weddings were arranged, it was traditional to keep the bride away from the groom just in case <laughs> she was not happy about what she saw. She didn't have an option uh, to leave. Now this is literally like they've never seen each other before. The first time they are ever seeing each other is at the altar. Nowadays, we're dating, we're seeing each other maybe months, years before the wedding's happening. So you're gonna see your person before you get to the ceremony. But typically nowadays, they're waiting till the night before and they're cutting off contact and they're not seeing each other until that ceremony happens. So it looks different now than it did then, but for some reason, we're still kind of practicing that tradition. Number nine, giving away the bride. Again, traditionally, back in the day when arranged marriages were more common than not, the bride was given away as a form of exchange. So they, the family would always get something in return. So that's why it comes down to the parents to give away the bride because that bride is seen as a form of possession of the family and it's up to the parents, those figures, to decide how they're given away and what they're given away for. Nowadays, it's seen as a form of the father or mother's blessing on the couple. So definitely not as extreme as it used to be, but still that family involvement and support behind the exchange of vows. Number 10, ringing the bells. Wedding bells are ringing. This originates from Irish weddings, so it's pretty different from the rest of the traditions we've been covering, but similar in the sense that it was done to ward off evil spirits. Apparently there are super evil spirits just wanting to steal that bride's joy and they did everything that they could back in the day to make sure that didn't happen. Nowadays bells are still rung at weddings, not at every single wedding, but I think there's something special about that wedding bell that you don't get to experience for any other milestone in life. So if you can ring a wedding bell, why not? And we've actually got a couple of venues on our website that have wedding bells available. So if you guys are interested in learning more about that topic, let me know and 
and maybe we'll do an episode all about the wedding bell chapels available to you in the San Antonio area, okay? Number 11, wedding cake. The most delicious, the most enjoyable part of a wedding day, the sweets. So originally starting in ancient Rome, the wedding cake was more of a scone type pastry. So think dry and crumbly and that new husband and wife would take their bites of this scone as a symbol of their first unified acts together as a couple. They committed to it together. So then after the couple was done eating their bites of the scone, their wedding guests would come and pick up the rest of the leftovers as good luck. Similar to the whole stealing the flowers, stealing the dress, everybody wants that good juju. And now I think it's kind of similar tradition where you cut that cake together, it is one of your first acts together as a newly married couple, and I think it's beautiful. I think it's an awesome tradition. Even though we're seeing more dessert bars popping up and um, different kinds of desserts, I think most couples still like to have that cake, even if it's not the main course of dessert, just to have that act of cutting the cake together and taking that bite super fun i love seeing the photos of that one moment from our couples who submit on san antonio weddings so if you haven't submitted yet we want to see your wedding we want to see your engagement do that at sanantonioweddings.com all right we've only got a few more left for you guys this is number 12 the honeymoon bridal babes i am just shook at some of these traditions where they stemmed from and the fact that we don't talk about this more often so Again, kind of going back to that best man idea where the bride had to be kidnapped in some situations, the honeymoon was traditionally used to hide the bride for about a month after they got married. I am so glad that traditions have changed. <laughs> I love the fact that we can um, honeymoon and not be in fear while we're honeymooning, you know? I cannot imagine being a woman who was just kidnapped, forced into marriage, and then stowed away on some random island for a month so that my friends and family couldn't find me. I am glad that I was born in the 21st century and that I'm here and not there. Anyway, tradition number 13, saving the wedding cake. In, in the olden days, Brides were almost assumed to be uh, ready to have a baby within their first year of marriage. So the reason they would save this cake is so that they wouldn't have to buy another dessert to announce their baby. I had no idea that was the reason. Um, nowadays, I don't even, uh, do people still do this? Bridal babes, are you planning on keeping your cake? If so, how and why, let me know. I wanna know why we're still doing this as a tradition. No shame, just wanna learn. Second to last, but certainly not least, number 14, the ring bearer's pillow. And we all know what a ring bearer is. Nowadays, sometimes we even see dogs being the ring bearer, but traditionally, it was a young boy and the small child would carry the pillow to represent innocence and new beginnings together for the couple. That pillow was a representation of that innocence, that gentle energy that they wanted to send that couple off into their marriage with. That is why we see the ring being carried on a little pillow down the aisle. Strange? I don't know. Cute? Definitely. All right, before I say this last one, I'm just gonna take a sip of my delicious Boom City coffee. Shout out. Number 15, bridal showers. So when my best friend first got engaged, I, for the first time, learned about all these random parties and was like, what's a bridal shower? What's an engagement party? How is that different than a wedding? Why do we have them? So if you're feeling the same way, here is why we have that bridal shower. Originally, bridal showers were not meant to be uh, a gift-giving party necessarily. It was actually for people who couldn't afford a full-on wedding. So this day was seen as the day to give your blessing to the couple, to the bride and the family of the bride, give them maybe some monetary support. But nowadays, we're seeing it as more of a gathering of two families, a getting to know each other, and a celebration of the bride, fun games, fun food. It's very different than how we originally saw it. And that's probably why I was kind of confused coming into the wedding scene. Why do we have so many different parties? Shouldn't there just be one? Isn't the wedding the party? No, you deserve that bachelorette party. You deserve that bridal shower. So 
while you can, celebrate as much as you can. That's what I have to say. With that, that sums up our 15 wedding traditions that we're covering today. So if you wanna read that list, head on over to sanantonioweddings.com. This blog can be found on the trending now section. And don't forget bridal babes, the buzz doesn't have to stop here. We're everywhere on social media. If you like TikTok, we're there. If you like Twitter, we're there too. So pick your poison, follow us, keep up with the buzz, like this video, subscribe to our channel, turn on those notifications, and thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time.